Disclaimer. We are two regular guys who love to talk Bone Thugs and Harmony. We do not represent Bone Thugs or any Bone affiliate. We are also not Bone Thugs experts. The views and information you hear in this podcast may be based on personal opinion. Please feel free to leave corrections and clarifying information in the comments. And enjoy. What's up, y'all? Beyond the Harmony, beyondtheharmony.com. I am Cecil West with the one and only. This is Mr. Jonathan Lippy. And this is this is the last episode of the season. The last one. It all comes down to this. The big one. It is a big one, it, you know, sitting there uh, just trying to figure out when the season stops, uh, all, all that. And, and it seemed like 20, episode 20 was it. And, and, you know, it's like 20 episodes. I mean, first of all, 20 episodes even for like a TV show is a lot, but we, we do it weekly. Uh, it's usually two to three hours. It's um, it's it's been quite a bit. It took us six months to get here to get through one season. Yeah, and and I think we we kind of touched on it before. Was you know, we we didn't miss a single week, and there were so many times where that should have happened, and we kept it going, which is a monumental achievement, at least for you and I, to to at least say that we consistently dropped week after week something new for the fans and I'm, I'm really proud of that, that we actually accomplished that. Yeah. Um, there are definitely, there were, there were times where I thought this is not going to happen. Uh, you know, it, so much went on. There was so much going on, you know, I mean, even when we started this, I was out, you know, I think the first, uh, couple weeks of us doing this, I was out in Vegas and, you know, we we luckily have been smart, and the way we release things, it's it's left us, you know, episodes for you guys. I like I like when they're fresh. You know, there was like a good run during the season where a lot of that stuff was kind of from the vault, so it it wasn't fresh, and it's been nice to to have some fresh episodes in here. And at the same time, it was good as well to have the mix up. Um, because at least for us, we, there were a few episodes that we dropped real late looking at some of the things we talked about at the beginning before the guests would come on. We're like, wow, <laughs> that was a while ago. And uh, in addition, you know, as I was reflecting on our season today, there were some events where they just seemed like so long ago and it was only six months, which I like because I always feel like my time is flying. My life is flying by. And there were some things that I thought about that I was like, man, that seemed like years ago and it was only, you know, six months at the max. Uh, things like like the day we, we sat together, this is a reflection episode. So that day that we, we were deciding who we wanted to do our theme music and, yeah. and, and yeah. we unanimously knew it had to be Phoenix Rising. Like that night was a special night, you know, thinking of that and then the fact that you and I both were like, oh, yes. Like right when we said Phoenix Rising, we didn't even explore any other opportunities. We were like, that's that's it. That's who it has to be. It has to be Phoenix Rising. And look at right. how that turned out. I mean, that gave the show such a personality to have it come in at the beginning and the end. And it was, that night was a special night to me. And that wasn't even live was, on air. That was just you and I. It was It was crazy. Whoa, I lost audio.
Hello, can you hear me? Testing, testing. Yo. It was wild. I, I got kicked out of the fucking studio. <laughs> uh, but I, I remember what I was going to say. Yeah, you, you were talking about the, the night we picked Phoenix Rising. Um, and, you know, I can tell you that I remember it, it being like a situation like it must be Phoenix Rising. And what the fuck are we going to do if it's not? Because she was too perfect. It was like, well, you know, there, there were so many, you guys got to understand. I mean, we, we had access to, you know, former Mo thugs and even, you know, some current, um, you know, just, just thug line artists, uh, the life artists. You got access to other people that, that do covers. We even thought about there, there was a lot of great, like, bone clones on the internet. We even thought about that. But once it came down to Phoenix Rising, I mean, she's the, the greatest bone cover artist on the whole fucking internet. Had to be her. Uh, we were very blessed to, to have her. And she, dude, she surpassed expectations. I mean, the, those lyrics, John came up with those lyrics and, and, he, and he's just like, you know, here, here's some, here's some, an idea, an idea. And somehow she made that idea real. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> we didn't have a backup plan, as you said, and it's just. And not only that, strangely enough, I don't know if this actually took place like this, but the way you know loc location services look, it appeared as if the day I reached out to her that she was near Brother Clay. I don't know if they were at the studio together. I don't even know if they know each other, but it appeared as if they were at the Busy Bone Houston uh, recording session that Clay was doing with Busy. And young blue and it was just it was really synchronistic and serendipitous if that was the case um so yeah that was a good night and then like the night obviously the night we did the first episode the mo thugs like leading up to it and afterwards brainstorming what the show was going to be to what it is now uh that's a, also a pretty strange memory and, and also having our, our first guest which was book of thugs shane abrahamson that was definitely a cool night too. So there was there was a lot of like early memories I had, and then also the stuff that we still haven't revealed was when you were traveling to go to Las Vegas. I was at a hotel, and some of the ideas we came up with that night that was definitely a fun night as well. Which someday we'll reveal all that stuff. Hey, uh, there's there's a crazy story about me being out west uh, that that I'm gonna tell someday. I I had I'm just gonna say that I had somebody who represents a member of bone reach out for a member of bone to be on the show and i i followed up and then uh it, it didn't come together uh for some reason bone backed right right off it so i'll, I'll tell uh i'll tell that whole story someday that's a good story. There's there's a lot of good stories to be told. Uh, a lot of good stories got told though. Um, so so many, and you know I I know a lot of people have like a lot of questions just about the season and you know what I, what our favorites were and things that we've learned and like I, I've had people say you know hey you know what what's all the stuff that you guys have learned about Bone that that you didn't know before so fucking much. We discovered yeah. so fucking much uh, in this season that we didn't know about Bone before. I mean, you got to really think about the things that we've not only uncovered, but then we've had confirmed by multiple sources. You know, it's all about checking out your sources. And uh, we got a lot of multi-confirmation on a lot of these things. Yeah, the, the biggest confirmation for me was Julio Costanzo's interview. The confirmation of E-1999 Eternal, the artwork was something that I wanted to know for 20 years. I mean, the the fan theories have always been there, but to get it from act, the actual guy was was such a closure, such a chapter closed for me, such a question I had for 20 years solved. 
and it did something for my mind. And I really thank Julio for that interview because that 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 was my biggest moment. I uh, was getting that information. Yeah, it was it was a great it was a great you know it was a great interview. It was a um, that's one of my most favorites. I'd say I you know I can't say that man that's got to be like a top five just because it was so different we learned so much new information that we as fans wanted to know uh that that we've you know we've thought about all those things since the fucking album came out man uh and we all we all guessed it we all thought we were right but but to have you know to have the people somebody involved with making it that was amazing so yeah julio costanzo was great um i loved that you know an underrated interview that i love uh that i i really enjoyed was the jason bibb interview mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> that one that one uh came out way better than i thought he was a really cool guy and uh yeah that that was that was a good time i enjoyed the jason bibb and yeah that he was, was a, he was a cool guy and and we learned. I mean, it's not like we didn't learn anything either. We 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 learned cool shit. He was a cool guy. I you know his story about like him having his copy of Faces of Death and Lazy Bone seeing it and was like, yo, is it the shit? And knowing Jason Bibb gave Lazy Bone his first copy. I mean, that's just a cool cool tidbit, you know. You know, <laughs> speaking of that, speaking of that, that video we put out either last week or the week before um because somebody had given you that video of that cleveland record store and then you sent it to me i don't know who, who gave that to you but shouts out to whoever that was uh seeing those correct those pallets of boxes filled with faces of death cassettes <laughs> i mean how did you feel when you saw that yeah that you know that, that it was actually it was jeremy jones uh jeremy jones sent that to me i believe and you know he he took the time to take some stills and he's like look faces of death is near so he presented it to me he's like here's a here's a still that says you know hold this for kermit and and he was like you know what what do you think could be in there he's like that could be boxes and boxes of fucking you know faces of death and i saw somebody comment on the video you made and said oh you know that that was like a year ago that's probably been, that's probably gone by now man that should have been sitting there for fucking 15 plus years you can just tell the way it was i, I doubt it got taken care of this year but maybe uh i i know i know for certain that kermit is sitting on a gold mine that he's not fucking with i would imagine that kermit is that's the retirement fund he's probably waiting for bone to end or something and then he'll be able to bombard with you know original copies who, who knows that's that's just my guess but i know the guy's sitting on a gold mine we know k chill sitting on a gold mine archie's sitting on a gold mine bobby jones is sitting on a gold mine um so he's sitting, on, he's sitting on a partial gold mine and also uh there was somebody else uh well romeo <laughs> romeo doesn't need yeah. it but he's sitting on a gold mine too yeah no romeo's got some crazy crazy stuff I, that's that's a crazy interview um we got one part of it out there are eight unreleased it, you know at least seven if you if you cut out the shit that we have to cut out there there's some stuff as you guys know we just can't put out there but even if we cut the stuff out even if there's an hour of shit we can't talk about there's seven more parts but we go through an approval process and and we just haven't been able to get any approval after part one so if you guys want to hear romeo uh parts two through seven during the off season make sure you hit romeo's page and say hey i want to hear part two of your interview on beyond the harmony because it, it was an amazing out outstanding um as in-depth as, as i got with any buddy we've had on and i've got pretty in-depth uh, i got as in-depth as possible as i could with romeo um he's he's a friend of the show he's he's a great guy he's given us a lot of great advice and he's, he's a good dude 
Yeah, and hey, do it for me too, because I haven't even heard the episodes. And Cecil's just sitting on this stuff, so <laughs> I need to hear hours six, seven, and eight. And uh, yeah, do what, we, do what you can. Get out the Romeo. Cecil's hoarding it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I don't want. I don't want to hoard it. Like I want to. You know, I want to let this motherfucker free. Um, but you know, when when you do a nine hour interview with somebody, it it changes from an interview to y'all y'all just chopping the shit up. Uh you know, th- there's a certain way I conduct myself when we have a guest on versus how I conduct myself when it's just you and I. It turned into just you and I talking by hour six, seven, eight, and nine. Um you know, so so some of that shit, like, he's just like, he can't let this out, and, and we're just not getting the approval. The guy is super busy. He's been going through a lot. So, but let but let Romeo Antonio know, hey, I want to hear your next, uh, your next hour. Uh, that was an amazing interview. Yeah. There's been, there's been well, a bunch. I got to bring the fucking, I got to bring the list up, man. There's been so many. It's on our uh, chart down below. I got the list of the 15 um, episodes that we did somewhere on here. Yeah. And uh, but let's you know what let's take it from the top. I, I'm feeling a little bit warmed up now. The beginning was you know uh, had to stretch a bit, but some housekeeping administration. And one of the things I had dropped I think like two weeks ago was the bone database. And obviously, as I stated in the video, I don't have time to do that. If anybody out there wants to take this upon themselves, I offered like a, a bunch of different ways to do it. I think it would be cool for everybody to have a Bone Thugs database with, but not just the database, with queries that you could create your own reports based on criteria. And I think the only way to really do it would be with meta tags. So it may be web-based, but check that video out if you haven't seen it. If you have any interest in like categorizing Bone stuff, definitely check out a database episode, drop some comments and like you guys sort it out on the comments if anybody's interested in taking this upon them. And then if you want that original file, I put a link to it. If you have any problems getting to it, uh, get at me on Facebook or something and I'll send it to you. But hopefully that link works and just, t- you know, you could use it. You, you guys could use that for whatever you want if you're into that. And then, uh, and then also um, we put out that Lazy Bone video videography uh, playlist. And I intend on doing that with Flesh Obviously, there isn't really much to do with Wish, Busy, and Crazy. Uh, don't expect the Crazy and Busy's uh, anytime soon, but Flesh Bones may be attainable. So that should be on the horizon. If you guys like that kind of stuff, um, drop it below as well. And uh, this is a question to, to you, Cecil. I didn't know that there was a Chasing Nightmares music video by Crazy Bone from the Chasing the Devil album. Uh, I think I seen it either on Bone Thugs NL or Stony Maloney or Mo Murda. Uh, one of those channels had it. It was like a a link, uh, you know, one of those um, click here, you know, the suggested videos. And I watched it. I mean, it's not a top notch video, but it had me realize how good of a song that song is. That song is phenomenal. Like I think that song bodied that song, Chasing Nightmares. And uh, Crazy Bones' verse on Welcome to Real Real Life. I feel like those two songs embodied what Crazy was trying to do with Chasing the Devil. And I also, I mean, this isn't even a theory. Uh, Chasing Nightmares obviously follows The Devil's Deal from uh, Chasing the Devil album. But seeing the video had me relive the song and experience it in a whole new way. So if you haven't listened to Chasing Nightmares in a long time, it's... It's a top-notch song. Beats good, lyrics good, storylines good, delivery's good. All in all, in all, the skills are good. It's it's a top-notch track, and it it has like an ode to um, ch- children's story by uh, Slick Rick on it. So so have you had a chance to see that video yet? No, I haven't seen that video. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I. I psh- I haven't seen a lot of the videos, man. Like the the more recent the more recent shit. Uh, I don't catch a lot of them. It, it's like, where the fuck do videos even go anymore? Is it just YouTube? Do, do they still, like, push videos to te- television? Like, how long before videos aren't a thing? Yeah, right. It must be right. It must be just for the internet, right? Like, I mean, do videos go to TV? Does anybody still watch music videos on fucking television? Yeah. I, I've had that question for a while. I'm, I'm 
baffled when I found out that MTV Video. is still a station. And I mean, I haven't watched television in general for like 10 years. I don't, you know, I haven't had a TV it, or anything. It, but MTV, like MTV itself hasn't had music videos in, I don't know how many years. If you want to watch <clears throat> music videos on MTV, you got to get like one of their substations. Do they, does it at least center around music still, or is it just TV shows that have nothing mm -hmm. to do with music culture? Last, last time I checked, it had nothing to do with shit. <laughs> Is it is the M still stand for music television? I don't. Or know. Did they... I don't fuck with. Wow. I don't fuck with TV. I don't fuck with. Yeah. TV. I wonder. I wonder about BET. I I actually watched BET the other day, and it kind of seemed like how it was when I remembered it. But I and I think they even had some music videos. But I was. This is another crazy thing. I was listening to um, some R and B the other day, because uh, I thought of Immature, Feel the Funk, and to me, like that was the precursor to give up the ghost with Busy Bone. But when Feel the Funk came out, and I was gonna post this on one of the bone boards, but I was like, nah, this might seem too, too, uh, too girly. But like that track when it came out, it was in '95. Bone was, you know, having their eternal moment, and I was like, man, these guys are like the first R&B group to kind of tap into that bone sound. And then two, two or three years later, they did the song with Busy. And I was like, oh man, I knew it. I knew they had to connect up. But there's a live, there's like a live music video version of Feel the Funk. The band is awesome. The bass guitarist is incredible. And like there's this last drum hit at the end, and and the guy nails it. So I, I enjoyed that. But then that took me into watching some new edition music videos. And then I was watching um uh, some Bell Biv DeVoe, some and just seeing but seeing new edition as a whole, I'm like, man. These guys were kind of like the R&B version of Bone, but they were a boy band. And I was wondering if, if like Bone was supposed to be the rap boy band. <laughs> as as corny as that sounds, I was just wondering what like, because they're kind of like an Easy E invention. And Easy E was good at marketing and finding things. I wonder what sorts of plans he had for Bone that never came to fruition. And that's something I don't think was ever really explored. <laughs> I think I think Bone was the the ruthless NWA replacement, and I think uh, HWA was the fucking was was gonna be like the, his his fucking not pop, but I think I think that's like you know that was gonna be the as pop as as ruthless is gonna get was gonna be HWA, but I th I think Bone had to be the NWA replacement. Okay, that bit that does make sense, but then again, like above the law, kind of was like an NWA side gig, and then you, right, you not what, but yeah, yeah, they weren't, you know, above the law wasn't really in '95, like I mean '94, '95. I mean, just look at how much they centered around above the law. I mean, you, you knew that it was even when Easy was alive, you knew that it was it was all about bone. Which is crazy yeah, to yeah. me. It's crazy that that he knew that Bone was like supposed to be the one because when Bone came on, there was still a lot of good talent on that label. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I enjoyed Ruthless for Life by MC Ren when that came out later on. Uh, but you know, Easy Easy did have a knack for gimmicks. So most people don't remember Terry B. <laughs> Terry B was a blonde white chick in like. The 80s, like in 89, maybe nine, 1990 at the latest, they made a couple of music videos for her. NWA is in her videos. Uh, so they had her. HWA obviously was a novelty gag uh, to kind of imitate like the girl version of NWA. Um, there were JJ Fad. JJ Fad was definitely very pop. Dr. Dre produced it. Yellow's in the video. Um, they had, they had, uh, it was Silky Fine on Ruthless. And uh, did she have some? Maybe she did. But she she was in like a group or something, right? I think so. yeah, I can't, I can't remember. They did. I mean, they had a lot of hardcore rap, and then they had a lot of side things that they were developing that never came out that were more poppy. So yeah, who knows? Who yeah. knows? She was she was a okay. It says she was an unreleased. Uh, she was part of an unreleased group called GBM, and that was on Ruthless. GBM, huh? Gangster, but yeah, and then she, so yeah. and it says she tore she toured with a uh, bone bone a bunch, and then 
looks like after that group or something, she went on her own. Yeah, because she was with RCA and shit. So the only, the only, the only time she was with uh, Ruthless was for with a group that didn't come out. And my guess would be that that was around the time of HWA. And right, you know, back back then, I, and we've even had people allude to it just even on Mo Thugs. There was only enough time and effort to put into so many females, as fucked up as that sounds. But but that wasn't the the winning formula. It was almost like we want one girl, and this was like everybody, every label, every group, you know, all of them. We need yeah. one girl that's like as good as it gets, and then we really don't need any more. So if you were girl number two, or you were gonna be like two truths on the so so deaf under the brat, like it's unfortunate that things turned out for too true the way they did, but but could you imagine if they signed that deal? You'd have never heard anything from them. They would have never recorded anything because the brat was so hot for so long or so so deaf. Right. Yeah. That and if Outcast was Outcast signed to Mo Thugs, like that would have probably not turned out as good as it did by them staying with LaFace and wherever else they went. Yeah, man. Would fucking terrible. Would have been terrible. We would know no outcast like we know it. Who told us that? Soldier Boy. I Soldier Boy is the only person I've heard say that so far. Well, and you know, there's another, you know, there's those what if scenarios. And I had seen, I think it was Lord Jamar talking to Vlad about it. If the DOC never injured himself, and they didn't go here, but this is what I'm saying. If, if the DOC never got in that car accident and damaged his vocal cords, not only would there probably not be a chronic album, there probably wouldn't be a bone. NWA may still be a No, they wouldn't still be a group. Maybe they would have. Who knows? But that one day, that one car accident, there'd be no Snoop either. And there may even be no Eminem if the DOC never got in that car accident. Like he, he's an unsung hero. And that one event changed the history of hip hop. Cause he was like the writer for the chronic and doggy style and a bunch of other stuff. And had he not had that time because he couldn't rap anymore. Like that's one of the moments that changed the course of history. That's crazy. But when you think he, about he, it, DOC. He, he he had been writing though like i mean we we know he was writing for easy like a lot you know so he he was kind of known i i think that doc was probably brought in as a ghostwriter period and and you know they let him rap second i i felt like he was kind of treated like yeah we'll we'll get doc shit done when when there's like nothing going on but it it, it felt like doc was there to write and and rap second everywhere we kind of because and and you know this may be before your time but the nwa and the posse album which really wasn't a real album it was uh i don't know if it was alonzo somebody put that album together after straight out of compton got big but the doc he was in the feel out fresh crew and he had like four to five tracks on that nwa and the posse maybe less maybe more and then his album no one can do it better was really highly received and and apparently there were no explicit lyrics on it other than the grand finale which had nwa on it uh but some of the singles on it like the formula that ties to bone because the bone cypher that dj quick produced was reusing the doc's formula instrumental which i guess dr dre made yeah and the the doc and the doctor which the doctor's dr dre that was it wasn't a huge song but like for the time period it had it had relative success it was probably bigger in the west coast but i love that i had the cassette single for it doc he's remembered higher than maybe the album was but the album was well received it even has a a fast rap track on it the portrait of a masterpiece but that doc album uh was was going to leapfrog him into star status and there's a lot of rappers that say that he was supposed to be the one and it's so crazy that he got in that car accident and the only thing that was taken from him was his voice. Like if that doesn't show you there's like a higher force out there, I don't know what else is. The one thing that meant the most to him was taken from him, but his life was spared. Crazy stuff. Crazy. Really crazy. Have you seen the, the new videos of him like singing and shit like that? Oh, I, he's singing now? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So DOC uh, was yawning one day. And when he yawned, during the yawn, he figured out a way to manipulate his voice 
and now he can sing. I mean, he's not fucking Mariah Carey or anything, but <laughs> the, the guy couldn't even fucking talk. I mean, it's it's incredible what he's doing. It's all over his Instagram. So if you guys want to see DOC, uh, he, the fucking guy is singing. He's an incredible. He's he's one of the most incredible you know talents that that isn't credited the way he should be from that from that time period. Yeah, and you know, unknown, I didn't realize this till I did the White Book series. He released all of his albums seven years apart from each other, so that kind of goes into the seven day theory. Uh huh. <laughs> and when I looked into it, I don't remember what all the details were, but DOC is a lot deeper than he lets off to be. Like, I mean, he seems kind of like just the guy that's happy to be there, but it seems like he's got some tremendous intellect, and he must have because Dre's kept him around all this time. And everybody puts so much into him, uh, faith in him that, hey, DOC, living legend. It's crazy. Yeah, facts. So, so the the thing I wanted to wrap up on the the crazy bone chasing nightmares was I was looking in the comment section. I love comment sections, by the way. Um, th- somebody was saying that, yeah, this is just one of the crazy bone music videos that got recorded and never released, which implies there's a ton of crazy bone music videos that we haven't seen. I'm curious to know if there's any more from the Chasing the Devil album, because I'd, I'd like to see how those uh, evolved. And, you know, sometimes when you see a music video for a song you like, but then you see the video, it, it, it takes on a whole new meaning. So there, if there's a bunch there of unreleased, is, I'm, I'm looking forward. There's a ton. We well, There's a ton of unreleased Crazy Ball music. And... I assume there's a un, a ton of unreleased videos as as well, and and I've been told why all these things are unreleased. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it, it's it's crazy, um, but I think there's a ton of unreleased videos, and I think it's going to be much later before we see them. Um, but, the, but there's a bunch. I I think that there's you know. This has been something that's been been going a long time. I think there's probably unreleased videos from even like Thug on the Line and shit like that. Uh, and unfortunately, the, the the reasoning is 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 pretty pretty wild, uh, and I and I don't think we see it come come to life. But I, I do think that there's a lot of unreleased Crazy Bone shit out there. There's probably more. I think there's more unreleased Crazy Bone shit than any other member out there, uh, and, and and that means Busy Bone too. Yeah, you know, speaking of that, I, I finally did get a chance to see Busy Bones reality TV show, just one segment of it. Uh, it was him and Jay Kaz. They were, I guess, leaving their baby with grandma, and then they went to they went to the movies to see The Purge, the first Purge, and it was like the theater was empty. I don't know if they they bought out the theater. It was a nice, it was one of those nice luxury theaters as well. And the place that they went to, and this is worth checking out just to see the facility it was like the best looking movie theater i don't know if it was in a in a in a mall or what but the the whole building was immaculate so it was really good looking so I, I don't remember where i saw it or how i saw it but i did see it it looks like a pretty cute little show so if anybody hasn't seen it yet it was something like big tv or hip tv or hot jam jam tv i think it was called jam tv so be on the lookout if you haven't yeah, seen yeah, it because that's long, yeah. That's the son's name. I think that's the son's initials or something. Jam. Ah, okay. Jam. Well, I see yeah. it. It's it's cute. It's you know, it's interesting. I think if I hadn't already I- interacted with Busy Bone uh, in real life, I think the show would be even more fascinating. Um now I see it, I'm like, oh okay, I get it. Yeah, that's cool. So be on the lookout for Jam TV, Busy Bone, J Kaz, reality show. It's definitely kind of cool. The places they go and whatnot. So now, uh, as far as giveaways go, you, you did your uh, giveaway of the the thousand subscribers. Got anything to say on that? Yeah, yeah, thousand subscriber giveaway. So we we uh, did the giveaway, and we have a winner now. The winner was picked. Let me see. It it must have been Saturday. You got you got. You guys are hearing this on delay, though. Um, so let's see. Today's the 18th. We picked it on the 16th. Okay. Now, you guys, I don't believe, are going to hear this till the 27th of September. So hopefully we've heard. 
Oh, right. Yeah. By that point. Yep. Yeah. By the, by the time they're hearing it. Um, but if, if, you, if you're listening, it's, it's John Taylor, John Taylor one and John Taylor, uh, had a cool little comment. He said, I love lazy bone. He's my second favorite bone member. He came to my town in Lexington, Kentucky, and I just missed him, but my cousin saw him and got a picture from him. Thank you for the opportunity, y'all. So taking taking advantage of the opportunity and, and winning. So John, I hope you're subscribed and I hope you're paying attention and I hope you see the video. Uh, what I am gonna say is if this premieres by the 27th and we haven't heard from we haven't heard from John by the 27th, then uh, we'll repick. We'll repick. I'll repick on the 29th. So if you're hearing this and John hasn't claimed it, we're going to repick on the 29th. But if you're friends with John, tell him you won this motherfucker, man. It, it was an awesome, it was an awesome prize to win. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, speaking of Lazy Bone, did you get a chance to glance at some of the, those Lazy Bone music videos in that videography? Yeah, I, I scrolled through. Um, I, I didn't have a ton of time. It's 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 funny. Me and John put out content on this fucking channel that the two of us just don't get a chance to to see unless we're both involved with it. There's just not enough time. But I, I did scroll through it, um, and I and I saw a bunch of fans getting in and and giving you some that you missed, which I thought was awesome. I love the interaction and it made me really excited for that playlist video. Yeah, same here. I appreciate all the people that did drop links. That was good. That's what I was looking for. And that's what I'm always, when I'm doing these collector type videos, it's not so much for me to say, this is the truth and this is the reality. This is me saying, hey, I'm trying to complete a collection here. I need some help. And thanks for everybody that pitched in um, so that we have a more complete Lazy Bone videography. And it's kind of neat when you see it all together as a whole. At first, I was dumbfounded by how like 50 plus videos but then I realized it's been 20 years, 20 something years. So it, if he did three a year, that's 60. But hey, tons of Lazy Bone music videos for anybody that hasn't seen them. There's got to be something you haven't seen in that playlist to anybody listening. So take a look. There's there's going to be something there you missed. I'll tell you a funny story is every time you add something to a playlist, it makes a post on our Twitter automatically. So there's like 55 posts about you adding songs to this fucking playlist. So I apologize to anybody <laughs> that follows us on Twitter. It got bombarded by us posting Lazy Bone videos to your feed. Oh, that's funny. I that's think funny. Everybody, that, Yeah, everybody that follows us is a Bone fan, though, so they probably enjoyed it. Wow. I got. <laughs> well, that's going to happen. Imagine when we do Crazy Bone, you guys are going to get uh, spammed. So please don't uh, don't unfollow us, but you're gonna get some spammings as I add more to these additional playlists because it's got to happen. So now, also uh, you had purchased some CDs from DJ Unique. Well, actually, you purchased uh, like MP3s. Did you did it get fully fulfilled? Did you receive all the discs? I saw uh, Shane, Flip Thugs. How how how'd that go? What got fulfilled and what didn't get fulfilled? DJ Unique is awfully disappointing right now. Uh, he put an amazing deal out there that if you purchased his new DJ Unique album, he would send you two, two fucking albums that they'd previously printed. It was amazing titles like the Night Riders album, uh, I believe Bone for Life, uh, the the Buddha Lovers or Smoking Buddha or whatever the weed one was, Bud, Bud Smokers Only maybe. Um, there, there was just a ton of them in there. Uh, I think it was Hathcock. So the deal was you'd get two of them. If you purchased this $10 album, it ended up being like 11, we'll call it 12 bucks with, with the tax. Um, so it checked, can I order more than one? You can order more than one. So we ordered enough to get, let's see, we ordered four times. So we should have got eight CDs. Okay, now we were only ordering these to, to sit on and give them away and shit like that. The Unique sent us four. Now I've emailed. Now I emailed Unique, and I can't even remember. I think it was like July first or some shit. He was like, "Hey, if you don't have it by that date, or maybe it was August first, uh, email me again." I think it was July first. And so that rolled around. I was like, "Yo, that we we got half of them, but the other half still cut, haven't come in." 
He never emailed me again after that. I've emailed Unique probably fucking 20 times every day, daily uh, for, for a second there just to get his attention. I even went and emailed him under some of the other orders because every order had to have a different email. So I had emailed him from one email like, yo, th- I did orders under all these emails. Let's just do it under one email. So I even went under other emails to email him just straight ignored i did see at one point shane was still having the same problem i don't don't know if he ever got his so i got half of them and for we i for what we got like we got a copy of night riders uh we got a copy of the bud smokers only i think bone for life um so so we got some amazing shit for for what we paid we got our money's worth but he he made a bigger promise and in common fucking bone style, just said, fuck the fans. That's how I feel about that. Unique said, fuck the fans when, when he didn't email me back. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's such a long history of, of these bone online things gone wrong. And I don't know why. Yeah. I mean, how hard is it to just fulfill what people ordered at? So. Because I, I'm sure the demand was fucking crazy compared to what he thought. Probably ran out. Who who the fuck really knows? Um, yeah. But I I know that demand. You, you know the lazy saw that demand, and you can go to lazygear.com now, and he's got a pre-order for a reprinting of Bone for Life. Now, when he reprinted Faces of Death, I, you know I I was with that. That made sense. Whatever. Um. The best of Mo Thugs, I'm with that too. The reprinting of like Bone for Life and like some of that shit. The, the whole reason why people love those albums is because they are so rare. Because you had to be fucking with that unique website during that time. So reprinting them, whatever. Uh, his cover's a little bit different. Instead of a black cover, it's a red cover with skulls and shit. Uh, kind of looks like the Bone for Life album in the THUDS bone thugs album kind of merged together but i guess i guess it's two different things so i i wouldn't want a reprint of it you know what i mean like i i want the fucking original or who gives a shit i'll just have the mp3s if it's not the original but this this one's supposed to have five bonus tracks on it that, oh. that were not on the original wow so I mean, if if they're doing a reprint, how come that didn't get fulfilled? I mean, that that should be even easier than well, fulfilling. So that's Lazy Gear, which is a different thing. Just the original Bone for Life was put out by Unique. So I think Lazy probably saw the demand that that Unique just had when he did his little promo for all his old CDs that he probably had sitting in in cases, and saw that the demand was huge. Like we wanted these fucking CDs, so Lazy was like, let's reprint Bone for Life, which is cool. But I mean, get, fucking put some unreleased shit out. Don't fucking reprint all these fucking CDs that have already been printed. Yeah, yeah. What's the point of that? Yeah. I mean, if you're sitting on all this other material, why would you even like I said, if that? I, yeah. If I'm going to get a copy of Bone for Life, I want the fucking original one. I don't want to reprint from 2000. I feel the same way about Faces of Death. Now, it's cool if you haven't been able to get a copy of Faces of Death um and you and you wanted one i guess it's cool for the reprint although i I gotta say like you know you haven't been to fucking ebay like you can get an og copy so even that thing was like a fucking stretch to me but this is a super stretch there's there's so much unreleased shit and and i know a ton of it there's like you know issues around them releasing because you know they unfortunately don't own it but you know lazy bone is sitting on a ton of shit that he owns like put put that shit out yeah, well, the one thing I did like that he did with that Faces of Death was gave it its own kind of addition. You know, that the packaging was different, the colors were slightly brighter, you know, so it's it's collectible in its own right. You know, instead of trying to determine if it's a replica, it's its own version, and it was literally for the people that wanted the music itself. And I think that they yeah. remastered it all. They made it sound a little bit better. Um, so, I don't know if it sounded any better in my opinion but i do know that like the bonus track was flow motion uncensored the thing that was disappointing was i I think it was the version right off the fucking internet that somebody like took the time to to reverse themselves you know lazy doesn't have the the dat's to that k chill does 
K Chill and maybe Kermit, who knows, maybe Bobby Jones. Those those guys are the ones that got that real flow motion uncensored. So you know, you got a you got a fucking MP3 level album. You know what I mean? <laughs> this, this didn't come from the DAT. This didn't come on the yeah. dad tape. So it's like what you bought a fucking MP3 album. I mean it's Kaz was notorious for that same shit, downloading MP3s and turn it into fucking actual albums yeah and well it, you know the other part is he he seems to have a knack lazy or whoever is working with him seem to have a knack for understanding uh the rarities because if they're if they did a face of the death and they recognize that um was it bone for life is is rare and then also that the mo thugs the, i mean there's millions of copies of family scriptures out there but the fact that they did that best of or greatest hits mo thugs um you know they're kind of at least they're dialed in to, to kind of seeing what's going on for the fans and uh putting out at least something that reflects it based on the rights that they have but yeah replicas yeah. replicas exactly what you said you know if you're going to buy a physical you want it to be have a collectability factor to it uh if they do add additional songs to it then it does have a purchasability factor but you know yeah it, it'll be if they, if they're unreleased songs you know i completely eat my fucking words and and i'm all about this then it, then it's dope as fuck if they're five fucking songs that i've been hearing for the last 10 years as an unreleased joint like like if it's got pd pablo struggle on it like you know get the fuck out of here <laughs> yeah and and i don't I, know I why guess, i guess that that was put on like bone brothers but he, you know i mean what the fuck yeah. you know you, you know that you know the songs i'm talking about yeah, and as those have been repackaged so many times. I wonder why there hasn't been a uh, archives volume two. It's how many? It's been years since the volume, the archives volume one, and I mean they got to be sitting on tons of material to have a, a volume two. And that seemed to, like when that first one came out, the volume one, I thought, oh wow, okay, this is gonna be kind of a cool annual, maybe biannual thing, and it just kind of came and went. But I well, thought that was, was gonna be like a new staple. There was a little bit. Uh, there was a lot of backlash with that, uh, with that album. We talked about it a little bit on the show, but you know, it, the the fans know there was a lot of backlash with that. So I I think that that kept people away. But you know, I was really excited about that uh, at the time when when that shit came out because it was like the promise. You know that that's what the fucking fans want. We we want these discs of these fucking unreleased cds uh you know and it's like here's where the problem is bone and the people around bone came up when the machine serviced a bigger part of the industry now the machine is exclusive to you know the m m's and you know the all these guys are used to the, the industry the way it was. You know, as soon as a CD drops, it's going to be put up download. And I do think Bone is starting to to come around and, and realize, hey, we we got to be the download kings before anybody else. Um, but but the fact is, some people just are going to steal music. Some people are just going to buy music, whether it's CD, uh, whether it's digital. But like. It, they they're waiting they're waiting for these times to put these fucking things out when they're gonna i i guess capitalize the most but it's like bro we're we're over here waiting for never right now i'm waiting for never right now yeah and and how the other question too is i know the first michael jackson post humus album must have you know sold through the roof i haven't checked the numbers but i remember hearing that it was number one but is and and everyone sees the success of the Tupac albums. I think the success of Tupac's albums became like everybody wanted to repeat that. Um, but there was something there was a special circumstance around the Tupac albums that I don't know if it'll be around Michael Jackson. I mean, Michael Jackson's a whole other story, but like uh, Prince, I don't know how well has Prince had any after death albums yet. Like, I'm not. I don't follow Prince that closely, but do you know has has Prince had, had any albums since he died? Uh, and have I they done well? I think 
So, I mean, they, they probably did average, you know what I mean? Because, okay, here's the other thing. And, and this is a real thing to think about. When Tupac died, there was a ton of mystery around him, whether he was right. alive or not. Um, but also when his albums were dropping, that, that was kind of like crazy for us as, as fans, that there were all these unreleased you know, songs and, and later on when they could remix the songs and, but now it's been done. So, so if we're waiting for, for that, by the time, you know, bone, bone, those guys look pretty healthy. And if we're waiting for that, by the time it comes around to that, it's like, again, I just want the fucking unreleased songs, man. Uh, and not only that, check this out. I, Here's I've seen I, all the I, tricks. I've seen all the tricks. You know, it's like we ain't gotta wait for no tricks. I've seen I've seen how it's done. Put the fucking that, music out. Yeah, well, and but the, here's here's another thing they run the risk of is that let's say they do all live another fifty years, which you know, I hope I'm not that far away from their age, and I'm hoping I got another fifty years on the planet. I mean, let's just say forty, right? And imagine what audio is going to be like 40 years from now because what's 40 years from now it'll be 2058 so i mean video itself audio is the, the way these songs exist now in 16 bit 48 uh, audio or 128 kilobytes or 320 whatever you even if you have the flac can you imagine what audio will be like 40 years from now i can't even I can't even imagine. It'll probably be beamed directly into your brain, and the the, the archival factor of all this and the way it's going to sound compared to the audio that'll exist in the future, it's going to sound so terrible that only people from our time will appreciate it. Because you know what I mean? Like, how's it going to be? The advancements in technology. That, you know, past past that, you run the risk of, you know, my my grandmother was into music you know, for a long time, but there, there hit a point in her life where like, you know, she wasn't out there like buying new albums from people and shit. She knew the songs that she knew. It, it didn't matter if fucking Dolly Parton or somebody put out a new record. At some point, Bone stops being Bone Thugs and Harmony and they become DJ Cool Herc and, you know, Grand yeah. Le- Wizard Theodore and African <laughs> Bombada. And, and it's like, you know, we're talking about legends but it's like no no kids are out there looking for a fucking cool herc cd uh, right you know nobody's yeah. looking those those young kids aren't looking for a slick rick cd so the only people looking for slick rick cd's are slick rick fans and you got to get them while they're still in the the place that they care about fucking music uh you know i i don't know i can't say if i'm if i'm 50 if i'm 50 and then that's when they're like yo the original cut from 1998's Heaven's Movie, including, and they drop all these unreleased songs, and I'm fucking 52. I don't know if I'm running out for that. Maybe, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that, that brings up a crazy point. Not only that, I was thinking of this as well. Uh, I mean, we have our little Bone community going here, but the Bone fans that I was friends with in real life when I run into them, uh, some of them are just like, yeah, dude, that's cool, man. That's cool that you're doing Beyond the Harmony, man. That, that's amazing that you're still keeping up with that. And and there's kind of like this, yeah, I moved on like 15 years ago kind of thing. And they made a, they, oh, yeah. we all were banging Eternal together and maybe Art of War, but it was pretty much an, uh, a creeping on a come up Eternal kind of friendship. And they're just yeah, like, that wow, was a lot of the still a group. Yeah. Yeah. So the only fans, so, like, only the real fans, you know, hung on between I like eternal and then like strength and loyalty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and then like at strength and loyalty, you got a new wave of fucking quote unquote fans uh, that love Bone Thugs and Harmony, and then they kind of phased out. So the only fans that exist are the the real fans. I mean, sometimes I tell people I you know, hey, I do a podcast covers. Uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony exclusively. And they're like, what the fuck do you guys talk about? And I'm like, so much. There's so much we haven't covered. Fucking couple couple hours every Thursday for six months. And, you know, we've barely covered shit. So. 
Yeah, and you know, speaking of that, let, let's 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 recap. Let's let's take a look at who we did interview, and because because we've already covered a lot, like talked a lot of stuff already, and I want to make sure we hit some of this agenda here. Let's do a recap and and reflect on the guests that we have had on the show, just to kind of relive season one. We did 15 interviews, um, five episodes, yeah. including this one, were our little recap episodes or housekeepings, two doe boys in a Cadillac. Um, but we started off with Book of Thugs, Shane Abrahamson. And what's yeah. funny about that is I think we thought that's what the show would probably be, would be interviews with with Bone fans, Bone collectors. And we had no idea where it would go. But um, I definitely I, thought I wanted we would be doing a lot like of that. I yeah. wanted more like that. What what ended up happening was when, when we did the Book of Thugs interview, I said, "Hey, I really like this." Uh, you know, Shane was a was a cool guy to talk to, and I was like, there, "There's more guys like this out here. I, I want to talk to them." Well, what ends up happening is we do the Book of Thugs interview, we do the Aaron Purnell interview. Shout out to Aaron Purnell, Creative Highway Design, who did our our intro um, video. And then we do the K Chill interview. Now, when we do the K Chill interview, you got to remember the K Chill interview was episode four. Okay. Uh, now, we, we, we actually recorded a poem before we recorded K Chill, but, but they got released. Um, reverse that. We put the K Chill interview out. The demand to be on the show went through the roof. And there were so many people that not only wanted to come on the show, but people that, you know, I mean, we, we, we were throwing it against the wall against some of these people thinking they ain't going to come on this shit. And, you know, so, so quickly that, you know, Capone, Soldier Boy, Mohart, I mean, some of these Romeo, some of these guys had confirmed months before we even interviewed them. So the demand got out of control and it became like, I mean, we were doing two of these interviews a night. You remember when we were doing an interview Monday and an interview Tuesday? I think that's how K Chill and Capone happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I take that back. Capone and Aaron Purnell. We did Aaron Purnell the very next night we did Capone. So we were running yeah. two of these a night for a little bit. Yeah. 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 No, the, the K Chill episode is what kind of like took, took the show to a, a different level. Like that's when, Beyond the Harmony kind of became Beyond the Harmony, um, and that, and and rightfully so because that's. Did we ever tell the story about the the research that you did? Yeah, I, we must have talked about it on the KHL yeah. episode. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and so that that that's where it all began for us, and and it's I was happy I, the response that that episode had, and still has to this day. And I knew that interview, I knew that was going to be a game changer, you know, and, and faces of death is still my favorite thing to talk about. And we still got some great faces of death interviews coming in season two. Uh, but faces of death is like one of my most favorite, you know, topics, um, to talk about a surprise favorite topic, because, you know, you know, we talk about a lot of shit on here. We talked about faces of death. We've talked about mo thugs a lot. Um, somehow we've talked about can't give it up the, the song and music video a lot. Uh, you know, we, we talk about a lot of shit, but a surprise thing is the night riders and warm. We did the Mohart and um, talking about that. I was like, bro, I, I, I gotta know more, 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 more about the night riders. We found out a bunch from Mohart, but I'm like, I gotta know more and more and more the way I wanted to know more about faces of death. You, you, but what else is there to know about Night Riders? Because I felt like Soldier Boy kind of briefed I, us on it, and then Mohart went in depth. Like I felt like after Mohart, I know, but that... Mohart, Mohart. Okay, first of all, those oh, are the Romeo only two, right? And 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 Romeo talked about it a little bit. Now that hasn't come out yet. Soldier Boy says he was involved. Mohart said he wasn't involved. So right there, we got the conflict, and this is why I love this show because when we have Sin on. Uh, if we get Thug Queen on, if we get Larice on, that's where we're going to be able to cross reference who the members were, shit like that. So it's like, now I got some basis, but now I got to go in there and, and check the references uh, because we got some conflicting stories. And if Mohart was able to tell me what well, Mohart was able to tell me, imagine what Thug Queen can tell me or Larice can tell me about fucking Night Riders from, from the female perspective being being in that role. Yeah. 
No, her her perspective must be really interesting. So that one will be an interesting one to hear because you kind of know what the guys are going to say, but like, what what did she? How did she perceive the whole experience? You know, so that'll be definitely something that we want to look into. Now, we here's a question: We did Kate Chill. Uh, we did we did Kate Chill. Uh, Kate Chill, you know, bounced into Capone. Capone is the most interesting for me, John, in the respect of. You know, we dropped Capone part one, and there was so much time between Capone one and two. Um, yeah. So much time. And 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 th that's still, that, that part two, a lot of controversy with part two, um, might be the most controversial, you know, move we've made doing some censorship and shit. But it's like, we, we sat on that video for, for so long. We were almost not even going to release it. And... We we had to do that censoring, or I I probably wouldn't have released it. I I don't think I would have. Yeah, well, and what what struck me most, like with the Capone, and I think a couple other scenarios, was the impact that like the Ouija board and all the occult type stuff had had on people. Um, I you know I always just saw it as just like hey that's cute Milton Bradley. You know my friends and I we toyed with the Ouija board a couple times like in high school, um, but I didn't realize like how how in depth some people, um, you know, took it. And, you know, then I saw some crazy bone interviews where he was talking about when they used the Ouija board. And, and again, like when I say we did it in high school, we, you know, this is around the time you watch some horror films, you know, you get into looking up the campy films, you tried to find the most gory horror films, the scariest one. And then you're like, Hey, let's play the Ouija. So it's not like we were some into that. I'm just saying it was just a high school kind of thing to do. And but to just to know the impact that it had on Capone and a couple other people out there uh, was was eye opening for me. Yeah, Bone Bone is like the only reason I was interested in the fucking thing. Straight straight up, I didn't even want to play it. Like just the imagery of the Ouija board and shit, you know, I thought was cool back then. Which you know, it, it's it's kind of evil shit. Um, but but it it was just cool as fuck to me. Like Bone Bone made a lot of evil shit cool. Which is fucking wild <laughs> to think about. Bone and Bone and Three Six Mafia made a lot of evil shit cool, uh, and you get Capone out of that. You know, you get Capone out of some of that Bone shit. So it's it's crazy how Bone shaped Capone's life. You know, so fucking much. To this day, yeah. to this day, you know that that group and that experience. Um, you know still sits with that guy well you know and it was co really cool to see capone and mohart in that picture together um i'm happy they got together yeah that was a nice pick they looked happy nice smiles yeah, and Mo mohart out in chicago it was in chicago and capone uh capone and mohart hooked up and and i was like you know i wonder what they fucking you know talked about because it's like Capone came in after Mohart was gone. So it's like they're both Mo thugs, you know, but like is being a Mo thug, like being in that fraternity, like even though, you know, like you were in the fraternity, like, you know, eight years yeah, before wait, I got here, we were all. No, Mo but thugs. you got to remember, but you got to remember, though, Mo was still hanging on with Crazy Bone, though, with the Night Riders so, during during Capone's reign in Mo Thug 3. You know, so so Mo it, was still kind of active. He was the last man standing. It it felt like though that I remember in the Capone interview that it felt like Capone didn't really have much interaction with like Crazy Bone and them though. It felt like it was really all about just Lazy Bone. He said Busy Bone swooped through a few times. You know, it it, it felt like they didn't have that interaction. But maybe who who the fuck knows? Well, I guess um, what I mean is they would have they would have something to talk about, like to fill in the blanks on you know, their, both of their perspectives of that time period, because it's not like Mo wasn't there. I mean, he wasn't there there with them, but he was there with crazy doing their side thing. So I, I could see, but but I see what your point is. Like, let, let's just say it was two right. different guys from different eras. You know, are you in that alumni, you know, and, and feel if, if like Mo Thug Detroit met Mo Thug South, would they have, I mean, obviously they would have stuff to talk about and they would feel a kinship. Um, you just wonder how that kind of interaction would go. Uh, com coming out of Capone, 
we did uh, an interview with Shutterboy. Shutterboy was a former The Life uh, artist. He was actually in the original batch of artists that got signed to the newly rebranded The Life Entertainment. So we did an interview with Shutterboy. Uh, that that interview actually, you know, I mean, numbers wise, uh, let's see, the sixth. It's the sixth the most played video on our channel. Wow. One point three thousand plays, and I, I can tell you that Shutter's been like a wealth of of stuff, wealth, you know, just a wealth of information. Um, but but also some stuff. He sent us that unreleased footage. Uh, he's hooked me up with a, a, a ton of, lot of shit, you know, and he, lots of lots of exclusive pictures and stuff. So shutter has been a really cool resource to the to the channel as well. Um, so, you know, the shutter boy interview was cool. We did that. Yeah, and it was nice to see. I mean, his hustle was great to see those results that that shutter is number six was. So that was just props to shutters grind and hustle. Uh, good job. And man. and. You know, that's all the videos in terms of interview. One, two, three. It's the fourth most watched interview on the channel. Wow. I mean, he ran with it, man. And that's that's one of the things that I think Clay was talking to us about was, you know, when you get opportunities, you got to run with them. And he ran with it. Yeah. Yeah. So we did Shutter um after shutter we actually had one of those episodes just us talking bone i i don't remember any of those so we'll, nothing to say there julio costanzo we, we you know we talked about him earlier but that was an amazing interview uh i i actually it was it was him and let's see who else at that time that i i couldn't lock in but i got a text interview with them quentin frost so i interviewed we we interviewed julio and what gets looked over sometimes is that I did a text interview with Quentin Frost. Now, Quentin Frost, if you don't know, is the guy that did the actual 3D rendering on the front of Eternal. So he didn't do the text or, or any of that. But but I, I do believe that he said in his interview with me that, that, he, uh, that he placed Bone, he placed Easy e and he did all the 3D rendering. Now I have a amazing scan, very high resolution of Eternal, where I was able to to zoom all the way in. And uh, if you, if you go to our our page, I, I actually uncovered a bunch of letters that are on a steel beam, way in the background. Okay, and that those steel letters. Uh, or those, those steel beams, rather, with the letters, uh, we found out are the initials of Quentin, uh, another person that worked on the 3D rendering named Bob, and then Scott uh, Enyart, I believe is how you say his name. Ah. And, and now Scott, now this is what's important, Scott is the same Scott uh, that was, I believe, involved with like all of the, the the Kennedy, one of the Kennedy assassinations, something like that. Really? Yeah. Wow. And and his and so like, if you look up him, and and I don't know if that's because maybe he took some bone pictures or or what. Like I don't know why Quentin put his name in there. And I think actually Quentin told me, and he said. He was involved in taking their photos, and he actually witnessed the shooting of Bobby Kennedy. Um, so, so the a guy that that saw the you know that the Kennedy uh, shit go down, his initials are hidden way way in the background of Eternal, and that's just like one more secret uncovered. It's like you just don't realize you don't realize how many secrets are there. And uh, that that was a cool thing. And, and only Quentin could have told us that because even though Julio Costanzo, you know, was able to tell us so much, he didn't do the 3D rendering. He he didn't even know about the, the letters on the steel beams and shit. So it's like, this is why you got to talk to fucking everybody involved. Yeah. And who, if we ever get Donald Cunningham on, that is going to be awesome. Oh, my God. 
he he reached out to me as well. I have his contact information, and it was crazy because uh, he basically said, "Hey, everything Julio told you is is what it is." Um, and and I was like, "Hey, man, we'd still like to have you on." And he's like, "Yeah, you know, he's like, I come on sometimes, so I I think we may see him in season two. Um, but but he heavily co-signed uh, Julio Costanzo to me, and he actually found us. I don't know if Julio sent him the link. Or what, but but he actually contacted me via YouTube, and he sat there and and listened to it all. So um, so that was very cool. Yeah, I seen I seen Donald um comment on a couple of videos unrelated to Julio as well, and I can't remember what he was, but he he provided some clarification. Maybe it was on the Beyond the Harmony videos I did on my channel. I don't know, but I definitely seen his name show up in the comments at least once, maybe more. And Let me hey, see. You know I'm actually taking a look. Uh, on the, Go ahead. Uh, this is unrelated, and, and I don't want this to sidetrack it, but that just re reminds me that we did that question of the day about Hell's Movie, and there's a guy in the comments that says he was the guy that did Hell's Movie. And I, we've never talked yeah. about this before. Like, I never asked you if you saw those comments, but did, did you see that? Yeah, I saw it, and... It was exciting, and at the same time, I'm like, I'm sure there's tons of people that want to take credit for that. Uh, and there's right. multiple versions of Hell's movie out there. So it's like, now he had a really good story. He had a fucking good story uh, that went all the way back to, like, Napster or some shit. Um, so he had a really cool story. It's tough because you don't know how to verify that. And even if you do... There were multiple versions, but yeah, no, I thought that was great. I thought that was great that 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 they fucking heard us talking about that, and that they jumped on and you know that and they said that. And who knows? They probably fucking did, man. They probably did. They probably did. And it's just like the kid said, I I just did it because I wanted to compile. He's literally like, I just wanted to fucking compile all those other songs in one place. Is why yeah. I made Hell's movie. And I put it on Napster so my fucking buddies could download it too. And that's how <laughs> Hell's Movie got made. And I don't know if you saw, but there was another kid that jumped on and he said, hey, I'm the guy that made the fake Wikipedia entry for it. And he explained why he did the Wikipedia entry. Wow. No, I, I missed that part. Wow. Yeah. So somebody else took credit for, uh, for, for making the Wikipedia wow. entry for Hell's Movie. Because if you remember, I called out the fact that, you know, had a, had a fucking bullshit Wikipedia in. Imagine what that must have been like for him hearing us talk about it, though. Like, in a, not not that, like, Beyond the Harmony is the, the end all for Bone Discussions, but just imagine, you, you know, you've kind of gone by anonymously for 20 years, sitting there saying, I can't believe this Hell's movie is still traded. This is just the thing I made for myself. And then here's these two guys that I never met before talking about it on YouTube. And, um, I hear some kind of cars. You got the Speedway there? Is it uh, NASCAR? Yeah, yeah. Sound like that. I think that was a <laughs> truck going by. Oh, and uh, yeah, so that must have been pretty strange. I'm glad they left those comments. And like that kind of response, though, that's one of the things I've, I've been hoping on. And that we actually, it actually, you know, who knows if it really was the real guy. But I'm pretty sure it was, and I'm not pretty sure, but most likely. And if that was the guy, then you know, mission accomplished on that. You know, we we finally found out who did Hell's movie. We discussed it, and now it's kind of a a chapter closed that Hell's movie could finally be laid to rest. We know the story behind it. Well, we know part of the story now. Fucking Hell's movie. So yeah, Hell's we. We we did Julio. We learned a lot coming off Julio because because again we got bonuses off of Julio. We got Quentin Frost. We got a little you know reach out from Donald Cunningham, uh, and I actually went and I I read what Donald Cunningham sent us, and uh, he said he met with Easy one time. We talked about all kinds of things he wanted to do. He gave me some notes and some unreleased music. Wow. So Donald Cunningham is sitting on unreleased Easy E tracks potentially and and with with donald you know even though Ju julio he says that julio pretty much summed it up it's for me it's more of wanting to know how his mind thinks and some of the origins of it and how because yeah. he was way ahead of his time 
Uh, and I'd almost want to know his music background as well, because like we've spent the past 20 years deciphering all that, which enabled us to kind of understand cryptology and, and those types of things. But he had all that understood already. He's like the Machiavelli, like just like Nitty was saying that Tupac, by calling his album the Don Cluminati, introduced everybody to this concept of the Illuminati. Um, Don, Donald Cunningham and, and the people that worked on Eternal introduced us all to that kind of cryptology, whatever you would call it. The, it was it was um, National Treasure before National Treasure. And but the thing yeah. is, since he, he gave that to us, that means he already inher inherently understood it in a time before mass adoption of the World Wide Web. You know, so so he must be a wealth of, of knowledge, of understanding, of deeper, deeper situations. So that that's that's what I'm if we ever get him on that, that's what I want to know is like how did he even come to that conclude because that thing was so in depth. So you know. It, it's crazy too because Bo Bone has got credit for being these these cryptic, you know, guys. Because because you you like to think that your favorite artists, especially back then, we we know different now. But when you bought an album back then, you you felt like they were as involved with the artwork as they were with the the fucking music. So you know we were all under the impression in in ninety five ninety six you know and so on like bone bone are the geniuses behind this um Don, donald actually told me that bone usually saw shit after it came out um you know so th this guy was a genius because he shaped he shaped us with that eternal shit uh eternal is by far the best bone artwork ever yeah, it felt like Art of War tried to be what Eternal was, and while Art the War artwork, was good. yeah, and, and I'm and I mean the artwork itself, like it it, it wanted to continue, which I I was, I was appreciative of it, um, and you know Julio kind of said there's still, I think he was kind of punting on, uh, on what those um, octagons were, but you know there was stuff in there in the Art of War, but it just it wasn't the same as that first time with with Eternal. But at least they yeah. Art of War tried. You know, I was I was happy they at least tried, and then they kind of just stopped trying after that. And um, and you know, yeah. besides Bone, though, I, that. I always thought that maybe it was Easy E that kind of came up with the Eternal. But then, like as I thought about it, I was like, nah, he wouldn't have had the time to to concoct something like that. So yeah, that'll be the, cool. And that actually, is easy it, though, and and Easy, it sounds like Easy probably. You know, e Easy was involved with getting the guy that he, he obvious Easy was smart, so he obviously knew like, hey, this guy's a fucking genius. We need him on on team because Easy Easy brought him in. You know, so Ju Julio Costanzo, that was an amazing interview. We we got a lot out of that. Um, that was episode eight, episode nine. Landmark kid, yeah, the Soldier Boy interview, game yeah. changer game changer yeah. yeah yeah if if kate chill didn't put us on the map soldier boy for sure uh got us across the finish line and uh number and one number going. one number one most played interview and video on our channel period uh kate chill number one comes in at number two as far as interviews and number three for videos so kate chill is a big one but you know soldier boy beats it by about a thousand now what's crazy to me is three point three point six thousand on soldier boy part one soldier boy part two only has a thousand plays okay the heck? so that, that that's and you guys in case you haven't figured it out the first hour is warm up basically it's not until the last hour or like the mid you know that that middle where where you get the fire so usually the beginning of of hour two the second video is always fire so if you if you guys are fucking skipping out on those on those follow-ups uh because that, that's crazy 3.6 on the first one and only a thousand on the second one you, you guys missed out big on that second half if you if you didn't listen to it yeah yeah i mean that's because you figure in the first hour it's it's cecil and i getting warmed up and then you imagine the guests come in kind of cold 
and they don't get fired up till around hour two. So yeah, that three to one drop off, you guys are missing. And that was probably the best part was probably part two of the soldier yeah. boy. Same, same yeah. thing happened with Mohart. Mohart did like 1.2 in part one and only like 500 plays on his second one. Um, Mohart two was another good one. And Archie, you know, when we did Archie, uh, and 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 you know, I know I know we're gonna get there and talking about Archie, but like that's an that's another one that I think was slept on. So so we did Soldier Boy, you guys, amazing feedback, amazing interview. I had a great time in that interview. It wasn't I hope I get a second chance because I think what I got was I think I got Soldier Boy who is used to doing interviews for 20 fucking years. Um, but I, I want to get that next level. I don't know if anybody scratched the, that, that next level with him. I think I started to, but I think if I get another Soldier Boy interview, I'm just going to be able to scratch a level of Soldier Boy that you haven't heard in an interview yet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when I'm he's a guessing, performer, you know, when he, when I have some people come on, you know, you now sit there and talk to him and we can tell that we're just dealing with somebody that's just telling us a story. You know what I mean? They're, they're just an open book, but soldier boy is a part of the business. He's been part of the business. He hasn't ever given up on, you know, doing his thing. So he came on as an entertainer and as good as the interview was, you know, you could tell that he was in entertain mode. Um, so part two, and I think I get to scratch past that. And I don't know if anybody's fucking done that. Yeah, that was a good one. And I think, I guess maybe some of the drop off is maybe people who advertise the part ones and then the part twos don't get shared as much as the part ones. That That's just my guess. Because if you heard part one, how would you not want to hear some of these part twos? And then, and in some yeah. cases, maybe you hear a part one, and you're like, all right, I, I get it. And then you don't follow through. And that's kind of the risk we run doing these in, in multiple part sessions. But that's also why you got to stay in touch and keep keep it going to find out when these part twos do come out. And I think during that period of time, we were kind of like releasing some some strange orders. You get an hour or two of this, an hour or two of this. We tried to do it for the variety. Yeah. Um, some fans kind of indicated that it's killing the continuity, but then other people want the variety. So you can't please everybody. Some people want continuity, some want variety. And uh, so we're learning as we go. Yeah. And so some shit's released kind of kind of spaced out. Soldier Boy Part One was four months ago, and it was two months before Soldier Boy Part Two dropped out. Some people indicated they didn't like the split up like that. Some people don't like when we run them back to back to back. Um, so we're figuring it out. We're going to see what's happening in season two because we may not even do it like that in season two. Uh, we, we've been talking about maybe breaking up an hour and giving you 10 minutes every day for the week of that hour. So you can kind of just fuck with 10 minutes every day. Um, so, you know, let us know what you guys think of that format. If we were to take, you know, an hour and chop it up over the seven days in the week. And you guys got to just get a little bit every day. Yeah, and I know the, the people that would that it would negatively impact are the people that queue it up for their night shift on Fridays. Because I do see that comment a lot. When we drop a, a Thug Thursday, they're like, oh, good. My Friday at work is going to be good because I'll have this queued up. So they're only going to get 10. But well, at the same time, cool. they queue up all- it, it, if they queue it up on Friday, though, they'll they'll have like 50 minutes of it or some shit. You know what I mean? Uh, however, it starts to come out um, or the following Friday or whatever it is. So so we'll see what happens, but, but let us know. Uh, we want to do the best thing for us, the best thing for you guys. Um, but there was a gap between Soldier Boy and some of the other ones. After Soldier Boy, we did another Just You and Me interview. And then uh, Jason Bibb, we talked about Jason Bibb. That was a cool interview. Um, learned some cool shit there. Jason Bibb did both Faces of Death covers. And, and and what I loved uh, most about it was like it was that that one is is like Star Wars fans, you know the the Star Wars fans know the characters that are in the background, and we found that's like the most obscure type of interview to do. The guy that did the he couldn't movie. believe it. He, he <laughs> couldn't believe it. I was like, yes, are you the same Jason Bibb that happened to draw Bone Enterprise Faces of Death? And he's just like. Yes, I am. He's like, I can't believe somebody's reaching out. And I was like, would you be interested interested in doing an interview? And he's just like, 
what <laughs> what do you want to talk about i'm like the the cover bro the the front cover and he's just like that's crazy that anybody wants to talk to me about that and and you know he de- he definitely he, he was pumped about coming on he was an easy guest to work with he just couldn't believe that somebody wanted to talk about it um never mind for i mean you know we we talked to him for a good amount of time i think we talked to him for an hour or so yeah yeah no jason and, and aaron both had like real good business type acumen to him and and it was kind of a cool contrast to see how things go you know 20 years later um but yeah uh, well, jason was- what i thought was kind of cool was you know we got to find out that he was involved with the logo. I'm a logo guy. You know, we, we know about the bone logo. Um, but like, you know, to find out that piece, him, him and Kate chill, they work together on the logo, the bone enterprise logo. Nobody really ever talks about that logo. Cause who gives a shit, but you know, that, that was just a piece that we kind of uncovered who, who did that logo. So, that was cool. Jason Bibb interview was cool. If you're sleeping on that one, you motherfuckers should definitely check out the Jason Bibb interview. Yeah, and speaking of that logo, I really love that Beyond the Harmony one you cooked up. Like, like when I saw yeah. that, it was just like, man, this this is so right. This feels so right. I like it. And it's it's just yeah, that wasn't logo. even me. Oh, you did? Oh, really? Nice. <laughs> That's even better. Someone else made it. Yeah, That's it's cool. not even me. Uh, shout shout out to to Jordan Lark. Jordan Lark is a listener, a fan, and uh, he he just he just told me one day I'm working on Beyond the Harmony Bone Enterprise logo, and I was like, oh shit! A few days later, he sent it to me, and that motherfucker is spot on. I use it a lot. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to you, man, Jason Lark. That that thing made my day when I saw it. I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah, we, we gotta definitely use that a lot more. I mean, all of our logos are good, and I want to use all the logos, but that one is really cute and i like it and uh i think about it a lot actually so yeah that one was dope. so we did jason bibb the next one was cool we did blaze bro blaze was such blaze was the homie yeah that that episode was was that felt like um like it felt like we kind of modified the format a bit because it was three guys talking bone and that, that one definitely stands out to me as kind of like a like a cool um like when you like baseball cards and football cards. I, I felt like that episode was the glossy card that came in every pack or the hologram card that came in every pack. Like when I think of that episode, I think of it as the hologram. Cause not only was it a great interview, we got those three snippets, which I looked yeah. on iTunes and, and Google play to see if those songs came out yet. And they haven't. And I'm like, what but are you listen, waiting on, bro? This is what's crazy. Cause he's, he's not trying to put them out. They're not him. He made those to show busy and bloodline and shit like, yo, you know, let me help y'all construct songs. These are the type of ideas I have. Now he is working with bone right now. And, and there's a video of busy in one of his live streams. And I'm pretty sure they're working on those songs like busy and bloodline harmony. If you guys haven't heard those snippets, we, we put them in the episode, right? Like they actually yes. jacked in real audio. They're so good. Yeah, oh, yes. And I hadn't heard them since we did that episode, like since that week. You know, I was doing some prep for that episode, and I hadn't really heard them. And I, and I was doing my archiving, and I heard those. I was like, man, these are even better now than when I first heard them. So, oh, they're good. yeah, I, I hope something comes out of all that. It, what a shame if those just die and go nowhere, because that was – this is no, – to I, me, it's I, what we've I been waiting for. I think they're working on, on that shit. I think they are. I think they are working on like Blaze is working. To my knowledge, Aaron DeSaul is out with Bloodline Harmony, so they needed somebody new, and and uh, that's Blaze. Blaze totally understands the the fucking uh, the the bone sound, and I'm pretty sure Blaze is working. You know, don't quote me, but I think he's working tight with Bloodline, and I think he's working with Busy. Uh, he was an amazing interview. That one's kind of like. I would say underrated as well. So if you haven't checked out the Blaze interview, it's it's two fucking parts. It was two and a half hours, and dude, he he's a fan. That's why I'm telling you to check it out as fans. Is you know if if you like listening to me and John just talk, like if you like these, I know these episodes aren't for everybody. Some people just come in for the interviews, but some of you love this this shit. And if you haven't checked out Blaze and you love what me and John do, man, that it was me and John plus Blaze just talking bone shit. Yeah. 
And those snippets, not only – Bone fans always want to bring that East 99 style back, but that would kind of be weird. It's like it's like the East 99 style in 2018 as far as the instrumentals yeah. go. And that's what I liked about it was yeah. that it, – it, it remind, I don't know if I used this analogy back then, but it was like when – like Xbox Live remade some of the old games and they enhanced them. So it's still the same gameplay, but with enhanced graphics. And that's what those things yeah. felt like to me. It was like, it was the same gameplay, but the, 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 the audios were enhanced. Like it was, it was made modernized, but was a total ode to the old school. So, and that's what really you want. You don't want to just repeat what happened back then. Cause then it just sounds like it's back then you want that back then, but enhanced for 2018. And that's that's how I experienced it. Yeah, so the great snippets. I believe they're in part one, the end of part one. So make sure you check it out. After that, we did Romeo. We talked about Romeo. And I haven't talked too much about Romeo because I don't remember what was in the first hour and what you haven't heard and what I can't say. So, you know, I'll, I'll just say that if you haven't checked out the first part of Romeo, check that out. And, and again, let Romeo know directly you want to hear hour two of his Beyond the Harmony interview. Uh, you know, it's it's an approval process here, and we completely respect our guests. So that's that's all there is there. But we did Romeo. And, and, and uh, let me add we, this in here on the Romeo thing, because what came out of this Romeo is this new concept of Mo Monday. And the Mo Monday may end up being like a variant of that may be the format going forward as we talked about a couple minutes ago but the mo mondays were tremendously successful for our channel and we even tried it out with um mo hart and archie and i think it's a pretty good format in certain circumstances certainly for the romeo because it was eight to nine hours long and we wanted to make sure that the great stories he told didn't get buried same with archie and mo hart so yeah out of yeah. that came mo monday no, no. Mo Monday is cool because, you know, sometimes you zone out listening to this and, and you miss something big. So I love the Mo Mondays. Uh, it's just a time thing. You know, we'd be doing so many more of those if it wasn't for the time. But, you know, the off season's coming and, um, you know, you, you may even hear some Mo Mondays that are clipped out of interviews you've already heard uh, just to make sure that that story gets heard by everybody. So but but let Romeo know you motherfuckers want to hear part two. Uh, we we were in a Mo Thugs run at that time because you know the interviews we did after that, we did Romeo, we did Archie, Mo Hart, and even though it didn't go in order, we did Bobby Jones like all in a row. We interviewed like a bunch of those guys. Uh, Romeo maybe way before that, but but it was a big Mo Thugs run. We did the Archie interview. Archie may be the most underrated interview on the entire fucking show. It doesn't have the plays that an interview of that catalog would have. The Archie interview, one and two, phenomenal. And and I can say that the fans are sleeping, our channel's sleeping. It, even if you don't subscribe and, and you're just one of those people that lurk and check us out, you are fucking sleeping on the Romeo or uh, on the on the Archie interview. Sleeping on the Archie interview. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and I actually went and re-listened to the Two True album. It's 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 like thirty times better after that Archie interview. Not that it wasn't good to start with, but like after talking to Archie about it, it's like re-listening to it again. It the album came to life. Like it you'll see it in a whole new perspective, experiencing it in a whole new way. So check that Archie Blaine out and there's a Mo Monday of Archie as well. So, so yeah. if you haven't heard it, check those out. Oh. And, and Archie you know was real, dope. Real quick, is you know I was talking about that time warp. I didn't realize, like looking back on this, I felt like the Romeo thing happened way early on, like even before Julio. And I felt like the Archie and Mo Hart were recent. I, I didn't realize they were that close to Romeo, but I remember that was like the month of Mo. So it does make sense. Well, it was but... the release. It was the release, but we recorded Romeo. Ah, uh, okay. In March. Yeah. It, the right. full first hour, Mo Mondays happen because, you know, we go through the approval. Romeo's right. a busy guy. He didn't have time to scan the whole hour, but he did have time to scan 10-minute Mo Mondays. So we did Mo Mondays for like three months before you guys got the first hour. So we actually recorded Romeo like three months before it came out, and then we just had the fucking the run of, of Mo Thug. 
Yeah. Okay. That makes sense then. All right. I, I'm sitting there saying, what, man, am I, am I not remember this correctly? But yeah, that makes yeah. sense now. And then, yeah. So after so we Archie, did, uh, the man, the Mo Mohart. Heart. Yep. Yeah. And, and that brings me to a question that I, I wanted to ask earlier it was, it was which, which episode did you do the most prep work for? Uh, K chill. Hey, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I think I did the most dedicated to the more heart, which doesn't even make sense. I shouldn't have had to do that much because poetic hustlers, he was the most known artist, but I, I wanted to make sure that we had a solid interview. And, and like, I think that more heart interview is one of the best ones we did as far as like in, info that would be most relevant and pertinent to bone to, Bone and Mo Thug fans. I mean, the Soldier Boy was was epic in itself, but you already knew that one was going to be epic, and um, right. and that and Soldier did you know uncover a lot of stuff that people have been wondering for years. But I think like the Mo just getting that that uh, the Night Riders and the background on he was related to Sin that made sense. Um, the story of yeah, him and Busy, all those early songs. He was so, originally going to be in fucking Graveyard Shift, bro. We found out that he was originally gonna be in GYS, Mohart. Yep. And 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 the reason why I'm saying this is like you know we have these unknown kind of interviews and and side things that 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 turn out to be great interviews, but like Mohart was a, a known staple, and to get th these kind of information from him, it modified the way we looked at things, it answered questions that we had, and then it made sense of things. Just like you said, he, he he should have been in graveyard shift, which that would have made total sense. Like, and, and who knows how that would have changed things. So, I felt like that Mohart interview, because you know the the fans asked like, what what are some of the best interviews you had? I felt like that one, and it's not maybe it's because I put in like two solid full days of just studying poetic hustlers, but but that one, um, that was one of the ones I felt like came out the best. Um, I'm not saying it's the best, but I'm saying like that one was jam packed with solid, solid info that was pertinent to anybody coming in, not just a, a super duper crazed bone enthusiast. You know what I mean? The Mo, the Mo Hart one, he was such a cool dude to fucking talk to. Just like you know, a lot, a lot of these guys, I love the conversations that we got to have with them. But Mo Hart was just such a cool dude. And I could tell he really enjoyed the conversation that we had. Um, I, you know, I, I, what's, what's wild is if you're Mo Hart, if you're Soldier Boy, if you're these guys, when you've done interviews post Mo Thug, the whole interview was just like, tell us why you fucking hate Bone and what you're doing now. That's all that's talked about. And we, we talked about so much with Mo Hart and these guys. And, and I think that's what makes the interview different is, it's it's that level I told you about. You know, we we scratch the surface of them as a as an artist, and we really get with them. And and Mo Hart, man, incredible interview. He's an incredible guy. He's um he's done a lot of changing in his life. He's he's very successful now, and he's just he's got it together. I love that interview. That's in my top five, I think. And. Yeah. What, when you were talking about prep, by the way, KHL definitely the most prep I did because I just had to unbury buried shit. Um, but definitely like notable mentions would be like I did a lot of research on Bobby Jones before we interviewed him. I did a lot of Archie research. Um, Soldier Boy, I knew a lot of Soldier Boy shit. So I just kind of had to like run the refresher course. Uh, but I put a lot into Bobby. I put a lot into Archie. And yeah, th those got to be the notables. Those got to be the notables. And some of this research is me like, bro, like when, when I had to research Jason Bibb, imagine how fucking easy that is. Yeah. <laughs> it's not because, I mean, how much do you have to work with? Right. and And especially on that thing and what's crazy what's crazy is you know i ended up getting a fucking and i sent it to him a fucking guy sees we're posting about it and he's like i still have a shirt that jason did like we grew up in the same yeah. hood and he sends me yeah. an airbrush picture of yep. that 
of a shirt that Jason Bid made for him. Like that that's the crazy shit that happens. And and that was one of the questions that the fans had for the show was, you know, what were some of the things that you guys learned from the process? And what I learned was as big of a city as Cleveland is, it's a small world and everybody seems to know everybody, which was mind blowing to me, especially uh, just last week with the, the BTNH archaeology, you know, people knew that site. They knew that the hood have eyes. They knew what what items were still there and what wasn't as far as like the boat and the trailer go. And uh, that's that's just what it was was just mind blowing was uh, how how everybody knows everybody in such such a big city. I mean, it, it's such a big city. It has a professional football team. So that that's what I got most. Yeah. Was just the Cleveland Cleveland knows Cleveland. And that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So Mohart. Mohart was an incredible interview. Like I said, top, top five, maybe top fucking three for me. Um, after that, I unfortunately, I had to miss this one. I had, I had a family emergency literally the day of the recording of this. But the, the one after that was uh, the Skin and Bones interview that, that you conducted. Right. And, you know, I said I did the most um, prep for Mohart, but that's not true. Skin and Bones, I probably did the most <laughs> because I listened to like – eight skin and bones albums like whereas mo Hart just had the poetic hustlers album i went through so many skin, skin and bones i don't even think i heard all of his albums but i listened to a lot of them and uh watched all of his videos because and it's a good thing i did because you wound up you know at the last minute not being able to make it and um so that one and and i didn't even get through like i think i got through like one third of the questions I had for Skin and Bones, but uh, that turned out to be a, a pretty good interview. A lot of new info came out of that. And yeah, I think that one was slept on in, in, for different reasons. But if, if you haven't heard the Skin and Bones and you're a fan of Seven Sign and um, some of the history of Seven Sign, Skin and Bones is like an encyclopedia. I think he's got like some of those uh, brain memory um, special abilities to memorize a lot of stuff or just to have a lot of information in him because that, that interview could have kept going. Uh, and the good part about that skin and bones interview was that in this season one, we, we did get to uh, interview Mo thugs, the life entertainment slash thug line and seven sign all in one season. So skin and bones helped make that happen. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to get around to that one, but it was pretty cool. He had a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. Um, yeah, wide I, I checked stuff. it out. I, you know, even though I wasn't there, you know, I, 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 I checked that interview out. I actually really enjoyed it. I didn't know what it was going to be like. I don't know a lot about Seventh Sign. I really only know about like the original Seventh Sign, and you know, I learned that they, they have these different, you know, uh, chapters or you know whatever it is. Um, Seventh Sign. Yeah, the different generations, right. Uh, so I really only know about Generation 1. So I wasn't sure how Skin and Bones was going to be or how he played in, but he's kind of like the unofficial historian to me, especially for that, you know, for Seventh Sign and for Bone and for, for you know, for Busy during that time period. Uh, Skin and Bones knows a lot of shit. So if you're, if you're sleeping, that was a really enjoyable interview. Uh, I, I know some people checked out his music and didn't love his music. Um, I, you know, he's he's kind of like ODB of Bone of the Bone World yeah. to me. And uh, man, he's he he was an enjoyable interview. He was a fucking enjoyable listen. Um, I I was kind of glad that I didn't get to be part of it in a way. Uh, it was cool to hear you, you know, just fucking chop it up and, and you guys had great rapport so skin and bones was a cool interview and our first seventh sign interview yeah uh and then i guess following up it was so it was crazy at this position we had uh back-to-back -back absentees so you missed the the skin and bones episode and i missed the bobby jones one well not the whole thing i i made it to the end part but uh at work i was on call that week uh, for multiple different areas of the business. And I got bombarded with emergency calls, missed nearly the entire episode, but luckily you were there to field it. And I haven't got around to hearing that episode yet only because I have so much stuff that I'm listening to. And, but 
I will get to that That's one. Good. And I'm, I'm surprised I haven't heard it yet. Those are flip flopped as well because we actually interviewed Bobby Jones before Skin and Bones. We interviewed him the week before. Uh, so it was actually the week before you couldn't be there and the next week I couldn't be there. And thank God it worked out like that because you did, like you said, the most interview for Skin and Bones. I, or uh, research rather, I did almost no research for Skin and Bones. I, you know, I really didn't know where to go. Uh, you, you had really dove in and, and got the information and it was the you know the flip-flop the week before for bobby jones i know i had gathered most of the information you, you know you weren't really which you know sure where to start uh and thankfully we were able to be there for the ones that we did the research imagine if it was flip-flopped and uh right. i couldn't have made bobby jones and you couldn't have, I'd have been doomed i would have been doomed on the bobby <laughs> one I mean, i'm just telling you right now like when was, I listen to this Bobby good. thing, it, it's it's yeah. When I finally get around to listen, to, I'm probably gonna listen to it on my drive to Tampa next week, and it's gonna be like all new. It's gonna be all new, all new info. We, we, and, and that's the other part too. Is like, is is that's you know the some people still you know think we should just be interviewing the main bone guys, but like I'm looking for even though I haven't heard it yet, I'm looking forward to hearing the Bobby Jones thing. I want it to be the right time to listen to it because I'm gonna learn so much new stuff from it. And I remember how excited you were after you did it. So, like, I'm going to gain uh, – I, I get to be a fan of the show as well as a participant. Bro, we, That's we what talk about, about so much. If, if you haven't heard Bobby Jones, I'm just going to put this out there. That it is confirmed the link between the Crossroads video and the World So Cruel video and the World So Cruel beat and the crossroads and think of the imagery and the and the guy in the black uh leather jacket and hat and he's in both videos think of all those connections all those things are talked about in this interview um and how they truly are connected and and how involved bobby jones really is and remember bobby jones is like archie bobby jones did production on faces of death bobby jones did productions on Mole Thugs one Bobby Jones did productions on Flesh and Bones T H U G S album. The guy is fucking involved. But just that piece alone should just should have every Bone fan like, whoa, wait a minute, what? And when when we talk about that, the connection between World So Cruel and the Crossroads, it's good. And you know, Bobby also did uh, production on that one track on I forgot the guy's name already. But uh, Mr. Lo uh, the, the guy that has the Faces of oh, Death yeah. album in his hand. Yeah, yeah. He did a, he did a bunch of, uh, yeah, and some other ones out there, too. All, all those, like, I think he worked with K-Chill, um, Brothers for oh, the Brothers Struggle, the Struggle. If I remember. Yeah. Okay, and did, so, did he, I can't remember. Did he say he did, he did anything for Southpaw? Probably not, because they sounded way East Coast, like old school hip hop. Well... Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I think Southpaw is the one, if I remember correctly, yeah, he was also doing artwork on the side. So I think Southpaw are the ones that produced all their own music, but I'm pretty sure he did the cover for Southpaw's album. Wow. Huh. Yeah. How about that? So, so and, yeah, because him and I actually talked about, let me tell you what's crazy is another thing in the Bobby Jones interview. We talked about the yellow face of the death cover and he's just like, yeah, you know, so badly did I want to do a different cover. You know, I just didn't like the cover, yada, yada, yada. And I got the drop on him and I said, hey, you know, the guy that made it, Jason Bibb, didn't like it either. And Kermit cut the fucking, Kermit cut the Grim Reaper out to save money because it costs a lot of money to print all those colors. So he put just the Grim Reaper on there and printed that motherfucker with the most eye-catching yellow that he could, and that was it. And I got the drop on Bobby Jones that there was actually a, an entire graveyard scene for the original wow. Faces of Death. Yeah, and that's what we found out during the, uh, the Jason Bibb interview is Jason drew the original Faces of Death. The yellow one was not yellow. Just the Grim Reaper was literally cut out from that. And just that was used, but there was an entire graveyard done. He said it was a similar idea to the remastered one that came out years later, but not obviously that same one. So I got to drop that on Bobby, and he felt a lot better about that because he was like, "What the, who the fuck, who did this? Why, why was this the move?" 
so many years of Bobby wondering why this yellow move was made and, and we got to clear it up for him. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And then I guess we wrapped it with Frank Nitty in the last episode. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah Frank that Nitty. one's fresh on everybody's mind. And that was right. a good way to go out. It was a good way to go out. And I, I pretty much, I think we already kind of wrapped that one recently. So it's like, that, that was, it was the perfect way to go out with Brother Clay, Frank Nitty, to wrap up yeah, the just... misery experience, the odyssey. And that also was one of the foundations along with, you know, the K chill. But the other part was the, the, the Brother Clay, California, Busy Bone Misery trip. And right, I think that was a right. perfect way to, to wrap. Because I... that kind of started Beyond the Harmony. I think I think there's a little bit of sleeping going on on that one. It looks like episode one did well. Episode two, a little behind. This is what I'm going to tell you about those episodes that are different than a lot of other episodes. There's some episodes that we sneak some exclusive shit into. Blaze, uh, Shutter. There's you know the unreleased footage is is buried in Shutters. We release that as its own video later on. But so there's a couple videos that have some things buried in there. But the the fucking Frank Nitty interviews are chock full of exclusive footage and and pictures of Nitty and Busy Bone and John's time with Busy Bone and Clay and you know even if even if not for the interview you guys yeah. are missing out if you're not checking out those Frank Nitty interviews because there's so much exclusive shit and the guys interviews are great. And he's got a lot to say about Busy and Bone. He's worked with Busy Bone. He's he's working with Lazy right now. Um, Frank Nitty interviews, I heavily co-sign. I had a great time in those. It was just wrapped what would be last week for you guys by the time you hear this. And uh, make, make sure you're checking those out. If you haven't checked anything out, you're about to have this fucking off season. So make sure you get completely caught up. Yeah, and, and on top of that, too, you know, if people are like a Frank Nitty, there's a chapter in the Busy Bone autobiography that's dedicated just to Frank Nitty. It has his name in the co- in, in the title of the chapter. So it's not like, you know, we're just fine pulling people off the street. Uh, he meant something. And uh, as right. Cecil was just saying, three hours, three hours of exclusive. When we say exclusive, we literally mean it. Like these pictures couldn't be found anywhere else. I had the, I got the opportunity to finally release everything I've been sitting on for a, a year, over a year since July 2017 right. and uh I mean we're talking thousands thousands of pictures and th- it, three hours of you got video the busy, is it busy at easy ease grave did that did that make this yeah oh, yeah yeah the photos the video well the, the footage that I had um there was the, right. uh Raleigh probably has his own footage but uh the footage that I took with my camera and my chips it's everything I had from the misery shoot, the all every behind the scene. I mean, there's so much behind the scenes that it probably gets boring. Uh, all the behind the scenes of the shoot from when I was there, um, all the photographs I took, everything, e- everything, everything. There's there's not a single thing that I didn't put in there aside from like stuff that just would have been like made no sense. Uh, so so again, like you said, even if you're not in it for the interview, you definitely want to check it just for the exclusive video footage came from my camera so it's not like it was out there i've been holding it because i didn't want to you know you know when you're part of a project you don't want to be that guy that puts out the stuff before you're supposed to but then after a year goes by you're like man i really want to put this stuff out there this was that opportunity for us for at least for me to give to the bone community everything that i had i mean it's all there so check that frank nitty uh interview out and um and you know another part too that I, that I thought would have happened a lot more uh, in our season was just more discussion of Excel Beats. Um, as I was saying that Beyond the Harmony literally began with Excel Beats. That was episode one before we had our episode one with um, either Mo Thugs or Book of Thugs, depending on how you look at it. But the first one from when I came back from California was with Excel Beats, and uh, it's not available on, on the not. channel right now. But I, I thought I just thought we would have talked about them a lot more, um, but we didn't. But I'm just giving a shout out to Excel Beats. If you've never heard "See See the Light," I know you've all heard um, "All I'll Ever Know." That that song is awesome. But there was another track that was released by Excel Beats and Busy Bones, "See the Light." I love that song. I play it in the car all the time. And uh, check out Excel Beats, all the other stuff. He's a real cool cat. 
Yeah. So so that was the season. A uh, li- little more stuff from the season still lingering. Romeo, Romeo mostly. Uh, a lot going on for season two. Um, before before we wrap up, we just covered the season. It was an amazing season, by the way. Shout out to all the fans. We had no idea what this would do. Uh, as of this recording, we're just shy of 1,500 subscribers to listen to two guys talk about Bone Thugs. So shout out to you guys. Um, it was a huge achievement to hit 1,000 subscribers and to be halfway to 2,000 already. Just huge shout out. I, this the whole beyond the harmony project has blown my fucking mind so um but before we wrap up i want to make sure there were some fan topics and it was just some shit that we haven't covered during the season and so some people wanted to hear us you know talk about it we we kind of talked about a few of them uh kenny mahoney wanted to know the number of things that you've learned new about bone and i have no idea i can't put a number on that so much yeah so much and, and we mentioned we mentioned some of them along the way uh, on this episode like we we talked about things we didn't that we learned new things that were uh the closure that we got yeah some of the new things we were talking about when we were talking about the mo uh the mo hard episode we learned some of the things you were talking about uh the bobby jones episode so we i feel like we covered that question throughout this episode um yeah I yeah think, i think we satisfied that one yeah he he also wanted to know who your who your favorite interview was and why out of all the interviews we did. Yeah, well, and, and I think when we say favorite, there was there was a there's different ways to to qualify that. So, and, and one of the questions I was going to ask you was who who would you have the best chemistry with? And like I think our chemistry and it could be because we had to cut it short as far as the format was with Julio Costanzo. I felt like there was a, a real good chemistry going on with that episode. It's, and it's because we had to pace it. Like there, it wasn't open-ended. We had to cover stuff in one hour. So we stayed on point. Yes. So I felt like the one flow hour. It, yeah. And that made the flow of it really good, which made the chemistry feel really good. And, um, so like that one, because of the restrictions, made it a better episode. Instead of some of these, some of these are just open ended. We don't know when it's going to end. Like the one with Romeo went eight hours. So because of that, I felt like the Julio one was tight. Um, I felt like the Mo Hart had the most info, like the most new info that was pertinent to anybody. And I felt like the Soldier Boy was the most powerful as far as like, uh, you know, what the fans really wanted. Everybody wanted to hear from Soldier Boy. They got. Um, as far, as far as blow your mind stuff, Romeo, you know, when you finally hear that and, um, the, the K chill though, I think the K chill created a whole new, a whole new, like, like, uh, world K chill interview created a whole new folklore, I think, and a whole new fanship of the faces of death era origins of bone. So and, and then all the interviews were good. Like every interview we've had, we, we ended up talking like an hour to two hours after the interview off air about how good the episode was. And like every episode that we've had, we're like, man, that one was better than the last one. And that one was, but you know, so it, it always gets better and better. So every guest has had something excellent to bring to the table and uh, they've all been good. Those are like the ones that stand out to me in my mind. Yeah. I, you know, I can't say, my favorite is is tied somewhere between like k chill archie and like bobby jones i think faces of death yeah the fate the hunt for faces of death um and and even for like bobby and archie i think they were blown away how much i wanted to talk about faces of death of course that's what i had to talk about with k chill but k chill may be my favorite interview that we did um i I've, I've loved listen coming from the k chill i i have the what we can say is the oldest picture of lazy bone as a rapper so i'm not talking about his baby pictures i know those baby pictures are up but k chill sent us a picture of him and lazy bone when lazy bone was his hype man it's pre bone enterprise so we got that out of k chill um we we got a ton of information out of k chill and 
I saw the internet try to prove us wrong. Busybone got on and said, hey, man, we ain't seen fucking K. Chill since the homies ran him off the block during thuggish, ruggish bone. You feel me? And the internet came both barrels at us with that. Now, what was fucking interesting was K. Chill in his interview himself said, hey, you know, I, I toured with Bone later on. Now, I assume that's when Busy wasn't around. Because you know from Cairo Wolf, shout out to Cairo Wolf, we got some exclusive photos. And we posted the photo of K Chill and Crazy Bone together during Strength and Loyalty. Silence the haters, check multiple sources. So Bone's been around K Chill post Thuggish Ruggish Bone. And I think that was an important moment for Beyond the Harmony. Not because it's about proving Busy Bone wrong, but it's about proving that Beyond the Harmony is out here proving fact. We're not out here trying to spread fiction. I don't want to spread a fake fucking Bone story. I'm not trying to, to, to tell some shit that didn't happen. I want to tell the shit that did happen. And when everybody tried to tell us that Bone hasn't seen uh, K. Chills and Thuggish Ruggish Bone, um and we posted that picture that was, was that was the silence it, well and it also had to deal with the fishbone story i think that's more of, of what triggered the whole thing was uh that kato said he kicked fishbone out busy said he doesn't remember a fishbone but then we asked archie archie confirmed we asked and bobby. bobby bobby confirmed and then obviously it came from k chill so that's three faces of death era people confirming a fishbone versus busy's memory of it so and, and that's what and like people were getting at us saying that we're pushing a fake narrative of a fishbone not that it even matters but like you know people were upset about it and it's like no there there was a fishbone there's it's three versus one there was a fishbone here here's where i lay with the fishbone thing because this is kind of how i felt about it when kate chill said it i think it felt a little bit more like he was saying, hey, Bone was crazy, lazy, busy, wish, and fish. All right. Now, when Bobby and Archie said it, they confirmed fish bone. But it felt more like maybe fish was like a mo thug. And I'm not talking mo thug in the sense that we know mo thug is the record label because we remember from Mohart. You know, he said, hey, Mo Thug was more like a street click. So my feeling is Fish might have been just somebody that hung out tight. You know, maybe he was the original uh, Boogie Night, you know, fucking street hustler. I guess Boogie was around there, too. So so who knows? Who knows what, what he was? Um, was he, like, going to be on Bone Enterprise? I don't know. It, it feels like maybe there must have at least been a it, it must have at least been a conversation for K Chill to go to Kermit and say this can't happen. Uh, but but Archie and Bobby kind of made made me feel like you know hey, there definitely was a fish. He was just one of the homies though. Right. Uh, either way, either and, way, and we know that the existence of a fish bone is a fucking real thing. Yeah. And and to kind of like equivalent that, make it make it uh, add up. It's like there was members of LFMOB that were never on one of our tracks. You know what I'm saying? But they were LF uh, for sure. Just like I'm sure with Six Five Six and L NLN. You know, you got guys that are that you're official, but you're just not on the album. And uh, but whatever. Fish, fish got the, the fish thing has been solved. Um, we got the picture from Cairo yeah. Wolf, and, and, you know, and what a strange coincidence too of Cairo sending us those those pictures. And then uh, I think you missed it on the first shot, and I'm looking at him. I'm like, man, is that K Chill? And I sent it to you, and then, yeah, you know, and, and sure enough, it was K Chill. And I think Mo Hart might have showed. Oh no, it was Mo Hart or Soldier Boy that showed up that day as well. Well, I was I, I was uh, I was too pulled in by the fact that there was this picture of Soldier Boy and Crazy Bone and Mo Hart, you know after the after the fallout i'm like holy fuck like did people realize that this happened and if you remember even in our interview uh with mo hart 
I was able to ask him. He had forgot about that. And I sent him that picture and it like, he was like, holy shit. And, uh, you know, and, and he was able to tell us a whole story off that picture. So it's amazing how Cairo Wolf sending us some exclusive photos gets us a whole story that we would have never known to ask. If it wasn't right. for that photo, I would have never known to ask, hey, what was it like hanging out with Crazy Bone during Strength and Loyalty? Because I wouldn't right. have assumed that that happened. And and it didn't happen. It's not like Bone called him. They pulled up on Bone. They saw some shit going on. Soldier Boy pulled up on him. Um, so, you know, all these motherfuckers connected. So, yeah, I was hung up on that. And you were like, yo, is that K Chill in a photo? And I was like, nah, nah, it can't be like K K Chill ain't been around like that since like the tour. I think even K Chill said that in his thing, like, you know, the tour. But it's one of these things that Bone comes through. You go see Bone for looks like K Chill wasn't there very long. He's just in those couple of photos, um, you know, and, and I think even he had forgot all about it. So amazing what what the photos capture uh I, i'm still sitting on some Cairo wolf exclusives if you guys haven't uh checked it out we have a playlist called the dark room there are a ton of exclusive photos uh that haven't been seen anywhere else um in that and and i'm still sitting on those and some other really cool things from Cairo wolf so season two and the off season is going to be really good to you guys yeah yeah, yeah. I was actually looking at those pictures the other day when I was cleaning up everything, and I was like, man, I can't believe we're sitting on all this stuff. We got through a season one, and as I said, at the beginning of this episode, in addition to the Cairo Wolf, we got all these other things that just never even got approached. they just been hinted at, and we still haven't figured out what we're going to do with that. So there's there's tons of surprises to, to come. So don't worry. As season one ends, it doesn't mean that uh, – the beyond the harmony won't continue on there will still be tons of material it's really just the the interviews that get released on thug thursdays that's just going to be on a uh, hiatus for a short period of time but we'll still have tons of tons of different material that will continuously be released it's really for us to to reload and and refresh guys um i love i love doing bone i love doing this podcast I love having you guys as listeners. It it becomes a lot. This became a job. We did this for some fun. You know, we did this just to be two guys talking bone and and it happened because you know, hey, Lazy Bone, God bless his soul was was going to put out the greatest hits of Mo Thugs and I said to John, I said, "How the fuck can you fill two discs with that?" And and we started <laughs> to have a conversation and he was like, "Bro, we should finally record this. We've been talking about it for years." Years. And, uh, the, the the time Years. was just right. Yeah, but now and, and it's a little, we... you know, refreshed because we we turned it into a job. It went from two two guys talking bone to a job. In fact, it it hasn't been as much of a job lately. But there was a couple months in there where I I feel like the only fucking thing me and John did was beyond the harmony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That so that one of the questions we have on here is from Javaka BTNH Walton. I think he he's the guy that does the post, the, the daily post, right? So so that's uh he he Tupac Walton, okay. Um he posts on all the fucking Facebook groups every day. He is also our Instagram winner. He won our exclusive one of one Cody Hillier uh mo thug's greatest hits poster and how how crazy is that that the mo thug's greatest hits are kind of like what made us do this and we ended up having a fucking poster an exclusive one of one poster being made uh end up being made of it with our logo on it our logos on it It looks just like the cover but it's our fucking logo and Mm -hmm. uh it's made by the guy that made the cover that's wild and and tupac walton won that shit and Wow. And, and actually the 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 winner video which did air on Instagram, I did upload that to Beyond the Harmony, but it, it, it was never released. So that's there. At least now that we mentioned that, if it ever does end up showing up in your feed, it's an old video, but there it is. Yeah, I, you know, I noticed that too. I was like, wow, that guy won. That's pretty cool. And he asked, Yeah. He, he just said Thug Mentality 99 album, which I mean, I guess he wants us to talk about it. Oops. They want us to talk about it. I I see. So this is what I think we're going to do. This is what we got left. Uh, You know, 
He wants to hear us talk about Thug Mentality 99, Cornell. Uh, he wants to hear us talk about Fifth Dog Let Loose. Um, Jeremy Jones wants to hear us talk about the Art of War Tour. Don Garcia has the question. If we're going to end with any of these, I think Don Garcia has got the question because everything that I just said, we're either going to talk about in a question of the day, a review, or like, you know, we've like, we talked about the Art of War Tour a few times with, with guests, right? Um, but Don Garcia says, why did the Thug Mentality Unplugged project never get released on CD or digital? First, the fuck of all, can somebody send me some information about Thug Mentality Unplugged? Do you know anything about this, John? No, when I saw that earlier today, I said, there's a Thug Mentality Unplugged? <laughs> but then I Bro. thought, maybe, didn't Romeo kind of mention this, though? I, th- I-, I could have sworn that Romeo talked about it not in the interview but i think when you were talking with him i think i think he might have mentioned it off the record but i don't know um, besides maybe but besides that i just searched it and, and i can't watch it obviously but i see that the life clothing in 2012 has a video of crazy bone i'm gonna send this to you so you can check it out later has a video of crazy bone announcing thug mentality unplugged show so it looks like he did a show. I'm wondering if they must have recorded the audio from that show. Huh. So so it was like a show with a live band? Because that's really cool, if so. Yeah. And, and, and you know, there's some great rap unplugged albums out there. Uh, LL Cool J has one of the, the greatest hip-hop unplugged, um, you know, sets I've ever seen. Jay-Z had an amazing unplugged experience as well. Uh, you know, there's been some other ones. I would be blown away to hear Thug Mentality 1999 unplugged. Just just the thought of that makes my brain tingle. Yeah. Yeah. Just imagine when, when all this stuff finally does start to get released. Uh, who knows? And, um, but yeah, I think... I wonder if you, if you were going to have, you know, because you got to figure unplugged right he's not going to unplug the whole two discs he's right. definitely not doing the whole two disc live there's a ton of songs that aren't getting unplugged but but you got to figure unplugged he probably did heated heavy paper um probably drama i feel like drama I mean, might happen then yeah who, i mean i mean you figure thug thug at? smoking yeah, buddha yeah what, oh maybe Island i mean warrior yeah. probably yeah, so if they did Armageddon, that would have been some kind of a production because the music there is kind of intense. Right. But he but he yeah. announced it in 2000. If he did it, it would have just been him, I guess. Be strange. Like he wouldn't where he had the time. He wouldn't add Soldier Boy and Mo Hart and you know all that fucking shit. Oh right, yeah. So, so just the solo tracks, yeah. Um. But yeah, you know, as far as why, I have no idea why, you know, why does so much bone shit not get put out that they talk about? I don't know. My guess is, does anybody have footage of that show? My guess is the show probably didn't come together. That is a lot of work. A band needs to restructure your album uh, completely on unplugged instruments. And then Crazy's got to practice with them religiously. We know Crazy is perfectionist. He probably didn't have the time to get it down the way he wanted. My guess is the show didn't happen, so the recordings probably didn't happen. Now, if somebody can say, no, 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 the recordings did happen and the show did happen, I I have no idea why they would sit on that. I think that's something wonder, that Bone fans would love. I wonder if Romeo was the guitarist for the band. That'd be dope. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, and I can, Don Garcia, me, I have no idea, but... We'll research it. I'll research that. That's that's worth researching. And, and let me add this too. I mean, you know, you just asked how come some of this stuff doesn't come out. Well, I mean, you and I, you're sitting on a, a music video with Busy Phone that you did, <laughs> so that still hasn't come out. <laughs> um, I, I have I, another I, song I, with Busy Bone that hasn't come out too. Yeah, I'm sit I, up until last week. I was sitting on foot three hours of footage and photographs that I didn't put out, not because I didn't want to, but just because it was, it, when I say it wasn't the right time, it just wasn't appropriate to put it out until last week. 
So, and, and just think they tour and do stuff all the time. There's people all around the world with photographs, uh, home video, all kinds of bone stuff that's out there. As they said, they're not only the Beatles of rap, but in my opinion, they're like the Pink Floyd Led Zeppelin of rap because they do so many shows. The only thing that they're lacking is some bone fan out there to c- categorize and catalog all their live performances. Because I know a guy that's a hardcore Led Zeppelin fan and a hardcore Pink Floyd fan. And there are lunatic fans of Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd. And not only do they do the albums, they've cataloged every single performance of Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd. And then have like, there's like storylines to each of the live performances. So Bone fans need to have some historian out there that kept track of every single Bone live performance and a little detail summary of each of those shows, just like the Zeppelin and Pink Floyd fans do. I, you know, I, I would have said that that doesn't exist, but since we've been doing this, I've met some amazing Bone fans that have incredible catalogs. So that could be out there. Uh, I'm I'm going to research that either way and try to find out what happened with Thug Mentality 99. So that, that answers that question. The, the rest of those things we're going to fuck in, we will answer on question of the day or where I think in the off season, we're going to do some reviews probably too. So maybe we'll review those albums. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the fucking cap. It's been 20 episodes six months one season it all comes down to now let us know who you want to hear in the next season what you want to hear um what we did right this season what we could do better you know we love feedback uh but but all in all for season one i'm really happy johnny boy yeah exceeded expectations open doors took us on a journey we never thought we'd be on everything's been lovely uh and and let me just add, add this last thing in we thought the fans were going to be hating on it, and you guys showed us massive love. That's a huge accomplishment to uh, be accepted by the Bone fans because you know it's very hard to gain that acceptance, and we take that very serious, and we respect it, and we appreciate it. And thanks for all the love throughout Season 1. Facts. And like like we started, you know, shout out to the people that help us make it happen. Phoenix Rising on our theme, Creative Highway Design on our 3D intro video thugsandharmony.com book of thugs.com bone thugs and our loyal bone fans.com stony maloney bt and h board uh so so many so many thank you for all the help i i think that's it is that is that episode 20 johnny that's episode 20 cecil west hey that is episode 20 we will see you guys in season two one more time my name is Cecil West with the one and only Jonathan Lippy. This is season one of Beyond the Harmony. Phoenix Rising, bring us home one more time. Beyond the Harmony for the fans we celebrate. All the-